Hi, right, so I'm, I'm Tom Hunt, the Conservative Parliamentary Candidate for Ipswich. This is the second podcast I've done. I had the first one yesterday with Mark Ling from All Ahead talking about the Northern Bypass and uh, whether Ipswich should become a unitary authority and whether Ipswich should become a city. Yeah. Uh, and tonight we're lucky to have Isaac Kodjo um, here as a second podcast. I've already met with Isaac before yeah. uh, at Costa Coffee. <laughs> Uh, Costa Coffee, yeah, it was coffee, 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 yeah, um, coffee. Uh, yeah, coffee. Yeah, so uh, and we had a, we had a, we had a photo taken. We had a discussion about knife crime. We had a yeah. discussion about uh, what you think about Ipswich uh, and how Ipswich could be better for young people. Yeah, because uh, Ipswich is a youthful town. You know, we want to be as good as. So we've got a few questions today um, to ask you. First okay. one is, uh, what problems do young people in Ipswich face, and what can mm-hmm. politicians do to help? That's a gen- very general one. Second one would be, should we reduce the rating age to sixteen? Yeah. And the third one. <laughs> Is is young people's mental health being taken seriously in Ipswich? Okay. Um, so the first one I thought we'd start with uh, yeah. would be uh, um, well, actually, I think probably firstly, like a, li- a very small introduction about yourself okay. and what you do and your role as a member of Youth Parliament for Ipswich, okay. uh, and then we can get into the first question. Yeah. Um, so basically, yeah, as you said, uh, my name is Isaac. Uh, I'm the um, elected member of Youth Parliament representing all people in Ipswich uh, that age between 11 to 18. Um, so how did I get involved sort of thing? Yeah. Um, well, my school was putting it out there that there's this thing that we can get involved with. And I was, well, I'm a person that studies like economics, so I'm quite yeah. uh, interested in like, current affairs and all of that. And I thought, oh, this would be a great thing for me to get involved in, to sort of pursue and run with my passion. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I got involved. Um, I emailed this lady called Maddie Powder, which said oh, mm-hmm. I want to run all of this. Mm-hmm. And then we had an initial meeting of around 20 or so people mm-hmm. that were thinking about running the, to become an uh, elected mm-hmm. member of Youth Parliament. So then we got told we had to uh, write a manifesto mm-hmm. and pretty much go on a like, mini campaign trail saying mm-hmm. like, why people should vote for you and all of that. Mm-hmm. So I created my manifesto. My key mm-hmm. points on it were uh, raising awareness of mental health, knife mm-hmm. crime, recycling and um, bullying mm-hmm. within schools. So yeah, I pretty much spread out my name across mm-hmm. the town, got a lot of young people across different schools, youth mm-hmm. groups and mm-hmm. backgrounds to uh, essentially vote for me. And, and they, you were successful? Yeah, they did, so yeah, yeah here I am. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so um, how long have you been the uh, youth, youth member of Parliament? Um, since about March last year. So, March last year? Yeah, a bit over a year. How long's your How long's your term? Uh, two years. Are you going to be up again? Well, is it just two years? Yeah, it's just it? two years because there's yeah. a cap of um, when yeah. you're 18. So yeah, I'll be turning 18 this year, so yeah. I can't really <laughs> yeah. run after. What would you like your legacy to be? Because thinking about you know, Tree, um, Theresa May, so she's yeah. leading office at the moment, and she's talking <laughs> yeah, about her, yeah. her legacy. Uh, what would you like your legacy to be? I want my legacy to. Well, I want to leave something physical in yeah. Ipswich, and that being said, I think I've talked talked here about it the last time, which is a youth council. Yeah. Um, so pretty much I'm um, in the midst of creating it such as first uh, very own youth council, yeah. where we're going to have people from different schools, different backgrounds, young people, yeah. all come together yeah. um, several times uh, a term mm. to discuss how can we improve it, Ipswich mm. and like the town we live mm. in, what problems do we face, mm. what is the politicians and people such as yourself mm. can do to help mm. us and make sure that our voices are mm. actually heard. Mm. So yeah, that, that is what I'm trying to mm. leave behind, that's the main thing. So, so, so going on to the first question then, what problems do young people in Ipswich face uh, and what can politicians do to help? Um, well, I'd say um, the problem of isolation, like young people mm. feel isolated like, and neglected as like a completely different, separate segment of society, um, where the, whereas the older generation don't really put as much thought into what we think or how we're feeling. So in the sense that um, activities, there's not that much for us to do. And Mm -hmm. even if there's much, uh, even if there is stuff for us to do, it's often the case that we as young people are left to go and find our own means of entertainment. Mm -hmm. Whereas uh, if uh, government officials could Mm -hmm. sort of like collect all of these things that young Mm -hmm. people could do and Mm -hmm. actually express them to us, mm. that would be great, I think. Because mm. even if it was like, I don't mm. know, like table tennis tournaments, mm. football tournaments, or even like a FIFA tournament, mm. like within community, mm. it would bring young people together. One of the things that, so I mean, I've been, I've been quite active in, in sort of 
I, I know you've raised night crime. You yeah. Might, you're based it actually in Parliament. Yeah. Um, I've also been quite vocal in terms of what I think. You know, yeah. Some of the things I think you know, can be done to you know, help tackle night crime. Yeah, that's great. Um, one of the things that has come up, you know, and I've gone into you know, parts of the town, sort of, um, is the is youth clubs. Yeah. And the importance yeah. of youth clubs. And actually, speaking to some people who've lived in Ipswich over yeah. decades, yeah. you know, who grew up in Ipswich themselves, said, so, you, know, you know, back in the day, you know, we had youth clubs. Yeah. You know, after school, we could go somewhere. Yeah. You know, there'd be a group of people. You know, there'd be an elder person running that youth club. It could yeah. provide some leadership. Uh, and actually, those youth clubs, you know, by and large, aren't there anymore. Yeah. Um, so, I, I, I can see that. You know, I can see why that's important. I can see yeah. why, you know, what you know, you know, if 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 what happens when you know school ends at four thirty? Yeah, yeah. What do you, you do? Know, <laughs> particularly if you've got problems at home. Yeah. Particularly if there's a, you know domestic issues and there's a family issues at home. You know, what do you do? And it's um. So do you, do you, would you, would you support that then? Would you give you more youth clubs? In yes, definitely. Um, within these youth clubs, also having people that young people can look up to and aspire yeah. to, because like without youth clubs and. Um, this problem of isolation which I talked about yeah. is brought about and isolation can lead to boredom yeah. and then boredom can lead to essentially crime or violence yeah. and stuff like that yeah. which has obviously resulted in this Definitely. negative spiral of not crime which is happening in our town. We can see it, I think it's, I think it's a couple of things, I think it's probably sort of education is one thing. Yeah. Uh, and one of the things that I've been trying to talk about is how um, youth clubs is part of it but also making sure we have a school system that Kind of appeals to everybody, yeah. and I think yeah. in the past we've always, you know, it's been a lot of focus on university, mm. which I think is great. You know, I mean, I think if, if if you're at school, you're academic, and you want to go to university, then that's brilliant. Um, but not everybody wants to go to university, so. and I think there's sort of a sense that that's not the only route. Yeah. It's one route, but actually, if you want there's to go into something else, else um, so I think it's a real sense that if you're, I'm just trying to think about sort of how people make the decisions to get involved in the wrong sorts of people in Ipswich. Uh, and I think if, if somebody looks at their life, maybe it thinks, what's in it for me? Mm. I'll get home at four, four, o'clock, four, four o'clock in a school day night, there's nothing for me to do. Mm. I'm bored. I look at my future. Yeah. I'm not achieving a school academically. What's in it for me? Yeah. So I think we're trying to address those questions, you know, try and make sure that there is a more the education system is more, it's more with multiple yeah. pathways. Yeah. So yeah, academic, so sort of apprenticeships, like vocational, and then also having having the. Uh, I just realised we're tapping the table. I'm tapping the table. I, I, after 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 tapping the table yesterday and oh, causing issues, I'm 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 yeah, pretty much. I've spoken to young people <coughs> within Ipswich, and they just pretty much tell me that there's not that much to do, yeah. like, which is why we often say turn to our phones and all of that. Yeah. So if we actually are provided with facilities, yeah. um, people will get involved. Like even yeah. if the government were to say subsidise certain mm. activities, like maybe mm. once a week having a say free karate class or something, yeah. this will get people active, like engage with yeah. the community. Yeah. And even if they enjoy that, they can always go and yeah. pursue that further, and they yeah. can always find more interests that way, rather than just doing um, going to school Monday to Friday doing maths English science. Did you mention the National System Service? Um, At yeah. Start, yeah. Before we actually before we before you started, yeah. you mentioned how you were so you just finished for the summer and you're doing some. Yeah. So um, on the thirty first mm-hmm. of this month, I'm mm-hmm. going to be heading down to. Um, NCS in yeah. Framingham um, to run a little workshop on youth voice, uh, why mm. people should get engaged with local politics, how it can benefit you, mm. what skills you can gain from it, and how to do so. Yeah. So who's going to be at this event in Framingham? Um, so pretty much it's the, pretty much people I'm, I'm represent, representing, so it's yeah. perfect for me, people aged yeah. around the, the yeah. age of 15, 16, just finished yeah. GCSEs. Yeah. So, yeah. That, sounds, that sounds good. You know, so, so, yeah. End of this month. Um, yeah, end of this yeah. month. Are you, are you, have you, so you finished, are you lower sit or upper sit? Uh, I've just finished lower sit. Lower sit, so you've got, you got one more year. Yeah, one more year. One more year, and then you're doing it to university after that? Um, yeah, I think yeah. so. <laughs> have you thought about what you might, you might study? Right? Um, economics, I think. Yeah, no, yeah that economics. Seems, that not seems e- to make sense. Not economics with something, because I, I think a couple of people I know did economics mm. just by itself, 
I felt it could be a bit dry. It was yeah. just economics. I don't know, perhaps yeah. economics with yeah. um, either politics yeah. or management. Yeah, yeah. It does sort of mix it up a little bit. Mm. Yeah. And the history and politics. Mm. Yeah. Uh, to be fair, yeah. I wish I took history at GCSE, yeah. but I ended up taking geography instead. Geography? <laughs> Yeah. Well, I did geography. I, I did geography A level. Mm. Yeah, geography but level. it just turned out to be a yeah. load of measuring rocks. <laughs> yeah, which I wasn't thinking of. Well, I, I wanted to be a. Um, I, I was all. I was all set out to be a dentist. Uh, oh, when I did my A levels, I wanted to be a dentist. Mm. Uh, so I did chemistry, biology, geography, history, yeah. and history was just an add-on. I was very much dentist. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, <laughs> a, that's the direction I wanted to get into. But then I did. Um, I, I realised that A level chemistry. You know, it just, it's yeah, I've, I've heard stories. It's different. Nice. It's, it's organic chemistry, and you've got to get all models and stuff mm. like that. It just went, you know, it went way over my head. So I, I, I decided not to be a dentist. And I thought it's probably better for society if I was a dentist. <laughs> and I thought, I thought I could go and get my way to do history and um, history and politics, and I did Russian history. Um, so in terms of the second question, um, and this is a little bit of a, so should we reduce the voting age to sixteen? This is this is a bit of a. Um, Tricky one because like so this is like a hot topic for young yeah. people I feel. Mm. But with this argument, well, with this whole debate, there are both pros and cons. Mm. Um, for example, I, I also expressed this question to a few people through an mm. anonymous Q and A site um, mm. within people Ipswich, and the main response was no, um, because someone even went on to say no because. As a 16 year old girl, I do not have enough political mm -hmm. information to vote. So, this is like a mm -hmm. really honest self assessment. Mm -hmm. And I think it's true because, as young people, we're not really taught about mm -hmm. um, current affairs, what's going on outside the classroom. Mm -hmm. So, it's very much very intensely classroom based mm -hmm. what we're taught in schools. Mm -hmm. So, at the minute, no, the voting age should not be lowered to 16. Mm -hmm. However, this could change in the future mm. if we were to change the way mm. young people were taught. Mm. Yeah. But then again, uh, there is also the other side of this argument uh, where, to, to the argument of that being um, young people aren't educated enough, when there are some um, people above the age of 18 who are eligible to vote, mm. who do not have enough education, mm. they just vote because mm -hmm. they have the opportunity to. Mm. So yeah, it could go either way. It, it, it's I, th I think it's, 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 it's definitely a point that I think I think there are some you know there's I think we've got a system in our, in our country which is sort of one person one vote. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that um, everybody's entitled to a vote and they vote whatever they want to vote. Um, I think and we've we've heard it before a little bit with this sort of EU referendum. Yeah. Where people were sort of saying people didn't know what they voted yeah. for. Well, actually, to be honest with you, I think people are entitled to. You know, mm -hmm. I think if we live in a society which is one person, one vote, you know, I think it's quite dangerous to sort of, you know, cast aspersions about what people, yeah. about what people know and what they don't know, because because we get into that sort of world, yeah. when we're like, well, actually, you know, you, you can have three votes and you can have one vote. So yeah. I think the, the principle of one person, one vote is very important. But in terms of votes at 16, I mean, I'm extremely passionate about youth mm -hmm. engagement, extremely yeah. passionate about young people. Uh, you know, getting more involved in politics, and yeah. I don't think young people are their views are, are represented yeah. in in national politics as well as it could be. Yeah. Uh, and I think th on things like housing uh, and, and issues like that, I, I don't think that young people are getting the rubber green at the moment. Yeah. Um, particularly on housing yeah. um, and the lack of attention to yeah. mental health as well as another issue which we're coming on to after Amazing. this. Um, but I, I I tend to agree with you actually about. Um, Votes to sixteen. Yeah. Um, I I I don't agree with votes to sixteen. I think it's just stay at yeah. eighteen. Uh, and I know that. Um, I mean, you've got to draw a line somewhere, haven't you, really? And yeah. I think it's eighteen. Just seems to me like because a, like a that's where point. you yeah. gain like legal responsibilities yeah. and all that as well. So it yeah. makes sense in that sense. And I think the older generation, the two are scared yeah. for votes to sixteen to come about yeah. because they believe. Um, we are the so-called snowflake generation, <laughs> where we're easily swayed by the media. Yeah. So I think, in a in a way, yeah, I have to agree. It is yeah. true. Um, but to combat this, yeah. um, giving young people the vote yeah. would be a proactive step yeah. um, to maturity for young yeah. people, because yeah. if they realise that their say could have an actual impact on their future, 
yeah. they would be more inclined to have to take it seriously, which might take away the fear of um, problemat problematic younger voters caused I, by memes and. I do, I do, I do, I do think some, sometimes when you sort of watch things like Question Time yeah. uh, and, and sort of take like sort of national TV programs, and you have, you know, somebody you get a, a really articulate, yeah. you know, like sixteen year old or yeah. seventeen year old who would say, you know, why can't I vote? You know, I vote sixteen, and of course everybody in the audience says, well, how, you know, this, this young person is obviously, you know, massively, you know, bright and clearly it's yeah. logical for somebody like that not to be able to vote. But of course. That's the sort of sixteen-year-old he's prepared to go on question time. Yeah, at yeah. This point. So yeah. most sixteen-year-olds probably aren't like that. But then again, not all yeah. adults are like that. They're not. They're not. And, and and of course, you're gonna find you, you're gonna find you know you're gonna find a fair number of sixteen and seventeen-year-olds who are more engaged and knowledgeable than, than most adults. Yeah. But I think by and large, on the whole, on the whole, mm. by and large, I think that you know probably those over the age of eighteen, you know, are slightly more so. As passionate as I am about youth engagement, yeah. I do have concerns about yeah. uh, 16. I think I do too. I think uh, I'm, I'm glad you say it because I, I feel yeah, as a youth and B for Ipswich, I'm yeah. sort of, you know, I, yeah. I feel as if both, uh, those at 16 should not become a thing. Yeah. However, encouragement for young people yeah. around the ages of 16 yeah. should become a thing. Absolutely, yeah. And people should yeah. be encouraged to get involved with yeah. what's going on politics and um, current affairs so yeah. they actually know what's going on in society because with Brexit and all of that uh, it's yeah. pretty important. So when they get to 18 they're yeah. in a position to use their vote yeah. for the rest of their life yeah. in, in an effective way. Um, couldn't agree more. Um, in terms of the uh, um, third question, uh, so, so yeah. moving on to the third question, um, is young people's mental health being taken seriously in Ipswich? Hmm. Mental health as a whole is a very pressing thing among young people, mm -hmm. not just within Ipswich, but nationwide. And yes, it is being taken seriously, I think, because there, are, there mm -hmm. are places you can get help like for YP, mm -hmm. more of that. But then again, more can be done, because I think there's a stat that shows that mm -hmm. like 70% of young people mm -hmm. go through their mental health issues um, alone, so that's like without any help, mm -hmm. and then most mental health issues are developed in people by the by the age of fourteen, and mm -hmm. that's half of everyone that's got mental mm -hmm. health issues, which is pretty scary stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but then again, there are uh, things which can result in mental health issues. I feel as well, um, such as. Um, social media, mm -hmm. which is quite a big thing in young people's lives, because mm -hmm. what do young people mostly do when they go home? Mm -hmm. They open the phones, go and scroll through their Instagram and Snapchat feed, see what's happening. Mm -hmm. And then there's people that would rather do that and like wait for specific times of the day to post the picture to Instagram to receive the most amount of likes, rather than go out outside and actually do something active. So I think, yeah, what Instagram is currently doing with the gonna like the visibility to see people's likes, I think stuff like that is helpful because, yeah, it would just reduce. Um, I also, I also, so I'm I'm 30 now, so yeah. so I, I sort of you know I I wasn't at school when social media was really active. I remember mm. my, when I was first year university, Facebook was introduced, and that was that was when it was introduced. So when I was at when I was at sixth form, when I was yeah. at School. I didn't have Facebook. All I had was MSN Messenger. Yeah. So that's that, 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 that's all. That's all I ever was when I was there. Uh, and that even that was the tail end of my time at school. Mm. It was like year eleven. Yeah. MSN Messenger came up. Um, but I would say, I was, I was, I was. Fortunately, I was never. I never felt like I was bullied at school. Yeah. I, I never felt like I was. I know people. Who, I know close mm. friends of mine who were. Yeah. Um, I, I do just just thinking about what it must be like though. I mean, I imagine it. You know, if 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 it, in a time before social media, in a time before that sort of stuff. Yeah, there's a very clear divide between the classroom and your time at school and your time outside of school. Mm -hmm. So if you were a victim of, if you were bullied and you weren't enjoying your time at school, I guess to an extent, you know, when the school ends, there's a clear divide. You go home. Yeah. You live your life at home, and you come back to school. I do think if you're having trouble at school and you live and there's this online world, and there's social media. It's world, just follows like and wherever you go. Exactly. So yeah. you're kind of having problems at school. You've been bullied at school, and you go home, and then. 
even if you're not getting this kind of like direct attacks on social media, even if you're not getting that, even just like you can still going onto Instagram and seeing people who've been bullying you or, or, yeah, just sense or, the presence. or the cool crew or whatever, yeah. and they're all going out having fun and stuff like that, and you're not part of it. You know, I can, I can see how that would be impactful, because that was before my time. Yeah. I, I didn't have that. I had that, I mean, I, you know, when, when I was at university, I was on Facebook, I was older, you know, I was, so I, I can see how that's a real issue, and I think generally, just try and you know mental health almost should be treated it should be treated with the same level of seriousness as physical health it's yeah. the same thing and 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 you know and I think the thing about mental health though is it's just it, it dominates our lives I mean I you know sometimes you wake up and you're like you just feel in a good mood yeah and yeah. sometimes you're in a bad mood and and, and 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 sometimes actually the things in your life you know you think why am I good mood because actually you know <laughs> the situation I've got today I haven't got a great day I've got great things going on because of that I and mean, then sometimes you're in a good mood when things aren't um, sometimes you're in a bad mood when things you should be in a good mood, and yeah. I, I think just I think uh, personally us ourselves paying more attention to mental health. Yeah. I mean, obviously in Suffolk, we you know we have had problems with the mental health trust in Suffolk. Yeah. Um, we're lucky in Suffolk to have a fantastic. I mean, it, we're lucky in Ipswich to have a fantastic hospital. Um, but we, you know the mental health trust in our area has had problems. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you know we need to address it. And the one thing I would say though is at the very least. It, it does seem that mental health, you know, in terms of media discussion in the media discussion, you know, discussion by, you know, national organisations and, and politicians, it does seem to be getting more attention at the moment, and and hopefully that's the first stage, and then from that you have real concrete actions to help yeah. try and grapple with it. But I can see how it's an issue now more than more than ever, and I think social media isn't an insignificant factor. Yeah. In, in many but it's not even just social media, society as a whole, feels a lot more pressure for young yeah. people because it's like, if you don't get these grades if, during those four week period yeah. of exams, you're not going to become yeah. who you want to be in life, like mm -hmm. that is your be all end all. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if, if, if young people, well, I'm not even sure how this problem would be mm -hmm. combated because it is just, mm -hmm. we are just living in a society where there's pressures pressures even from um, parents where you where I know some young people that are pressured that well essentially that they have to get these grades mm -hmm. um, which is having quite a big toll on them it leads to stress which can then lead to other things such as um, low self-esteem which can then lead to stuff such as like self-harm drug mm -hmm. abuse and even potentially suicide mm -hmm. so if we're able to sort of tackle mm -hmm. these the root causes head on that would be the best way forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. Um, I, and I think this is, I think this is um, an issue that is of the utmost seriousness, and we've got to deal with it. Yeah. And um, I mean, as you know, Ipswich is a pretty useful, youthful town. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of young people in Ipswich. Yeah. You know, we've got a lot of colleges, a lot of schools, and new, uh, university, and, uh, uh, and and from what I can see, you're doing a good job in representing it. You're yeah. you're in, you're in uh, Local media quite a lot, aren't yeah. And um, you know, maybe it's a shame you, you can only be you can be for two years. Maybe yeah. you can make it permanent role. I mean, I'll, I'll still definitely be involved be with the youth yeah. council. I think. Yeah. Yeah. And do you want to get into politics yourself? Um, I haven't really thought about going straight into politics, yeah. but that always could be a route that I go down eventually. I'm going to see how university yeah. turns out. I'm yeah. enjoying it. Yeah, and then maybe we'll see. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Well, it's a good start if that is what you need to do. Mm. Um, and if not, you're making a difference in the short term here. So yeah, it's all it's all positive. I think more young people should be encouraged yeah. to engage with the community to try mm. and make a difference. Yeah. Because as I said, uh, there are too many young people that would rather just go on the phones mm. when they can actually be active in the community to try and mm. make the place they live in. A better place, but not only for themselves, mm -hmm. but for their friends and um, future generations. And there's a, there's a point also. I think in some ways, as a young person, you're almost more connected than you've ever been through social media. But in another yeah. way, because of, almost partly because of that, yeah, you're you're more disconnected than you've ever been. Yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. Social media, if it's used in the right way, it's one of the most positive inventions yeah. ever. Because yeah. businesses can grow, you can make friends, yeah. you can be inspired. Yeah. Um, but then again, there is also that dark side, yeah. where it just leads you to 
I don't know, do some stupid things for life. And, and also, surely the sense that, um, you know, being active on social media, connecting with people on social media, yeah. it shouldn't be a substitute mm. to actual real real yeah. you know, if, if if your engagement with social media is a sort of in addition to you know strong connections with people in real life and yeah. then great or if actually Facebook help, helps you to make meet more people yeah um, but it a sense of this it shouldn't just be a, in its own world because then it can actually become a negative and um, I mean I, I in terms of people being negative about people and things on, on, on social media it, it's an interesting thing because a lot of people feel prepared to be particularly nasty on social media, but yeah. actually they wouldn't say it to your face. Mm. Um, and um, maybe we've all had that. Yeah, those keyboard warriors. I keyboard think warriors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a bit, there, there is a lot of them, and as you can imagine, I've had I've had some yeah, some of that as well. And, yeah. uh, <laughs> I just think that if, I think in politics uh, generally, I think. Yeah. Regardless of what your views are, I mean, we all deserve to be treated with respect. You know? yeah. I mean, there's definitely there's a public yeah. arena for discussion and debate about different yeah. views about things. Yeah. People can have the different yeah. views. Yeah. I think that, yeah. I think that's that's a great thing. People have yeah. different views. Well, it's about how you portray those views yeah. like, in a respectful manner. Yeah. Because like you wouldn't say it, as you said, you wouldn't say yeah. it to someone if you were say it as we are separate yeah. to each other. Yeah. So yeah. Well, thanks a lot for coming in. No worries. And it's um, it's, it's, it's our second uh, podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and um, you know we'll be uh, publishing it pretty soon. Oh, and that's uh, good. and hopefully enjoy your weekend and uh, best of luck in uh, family. Oh um, yeah, yeah, family. Your, your yeah, national yeah. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Oh, no thank you. Thanks Bye. a lot.